All right, my nerd dizzles, you may be thinking, hey, where are you? This is my skeleton spawner. I had found it while caving. I've been meaning to make an actual uh, skeleton grinder, XP grinder out of it. So that's what I did. It's not the most efficient. It doesn't get me a whole, whole lot, but it works. So I decorated it with the desert theme since, you know, we're in the desert. Skeletons, I just thought it was kind of nice. And so there they are. They spawn over there. And then they get pushed in here. And I can just sit here and do this. And they can't shoot me. They die on the hopper. And their loot goes into here. Got a couple of furnaces over here to smelt down any gold armor they drop. I've got a grindstone to grind anything armor that they drop that has enchantments on it that I may or may not want. And so a little bit extra XP. And part of the reason I did this, part of the reason, because I was out and about in the woods, I wasn't recording, but a creeper snuck up and blew me up. He killed me. And then by the time I got to my stuff, it had despawned. It was gone. All of my armor, all of my we my weapons, all my good stuff, just gone. Despawned. It was not fun. So I'm starting over. Got some basic gear. But I need a bunch of XP to get all my gear back up to where it needs to be. So I've been over here, grinding away, trying to get that oh-so-elusive experience so that I can get my gear where I need it to be. I have the books I need. Just got to get that XP to uh, enchant the stuff. So I'm just going to be here for a little bit. And then when uh, we're done kind of grinding, I'll bring y'all back in. Oh, thanks like uh, High Waters is up to something. Good luck. Don't die. I've started this building. And I've, for now, this is where... Farron the fourth is hiding out. So when I am ready to convert, Farron's going to be on the job. And I'm going to make this kind of a barracks. So here's the story. All right, about 20 years ago, I'd wanted to write a book. It was going to be a fantasy novel. And so I did a whole bunch of world building. And by a whole bunch, I mean, like, a lot. I have notes after notes after note after note about this world that I was going to write a story in. But the years went on, and nothing really happened. So I left it alone. Fast forward to a few years ago. Started playing Dungeons & Dragons with some friends of mine. And I wanted to do a setting. I was trying to figure out what to do. So I dug out my notes. And I'm like, this would be a great setting for the story. So I started making the uh, story revolve around this world I'd built. I had a lot of notes already, so I didn't have to do too much. One of the lands I made up, and I did this after I started playing Dungeons & Dragons. Because I needed a place to put these type of people was this land called Durstad. It was an Australia size land and it was mainly desert, rocky terrain with just a few green areas around the like coastal areas. So these vampires lived on the continent of Durstad. But since it's a hot, sunny desert, they were forced to live underground. 
And so they were called the Varshul, which meant blood eaters. So to make sure that the vampires didn't rise up and try to take over the world, there was this group called the Var Sadar, the Blood Rangers. And so this town I'm basing off the land of Durstad, and I want it to be one of the towns that the Var Sadar, the Blood Rangers, kind of control. And they use it as a base of operations to patrol the desert to make sure the vampires aren't doing anything that I'm supposed to. So this building is going to be a Var Sadar headquarters. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do in here yet, but I wanted to reflect that. So for now, this is a one of the teal doors from the warped wood. Probably going to use a lot of reds because red kind of symbolized the Var Sadar colors. They were blood rangers. So that's the plan. That's what I'm going to be doing to this uh, place. I still don't know exactly what I'm going to name it. One of the towns was called Sclavo Campos. It's kind of a mouthful. I might go with that. Or I may make up something brand new just for this. Because the world of Gaius, the stuff I'm going to be building is going to be based on the world of Gaius. From my story I was going to tell and the notes I took and the Dungeons and Dragons campaign we had been playing. So that's what the story behind why I'm doing this particular town. Still have a lot of stuff I want to do here. And then once I'm done here, I've got another town I want to create. Uh, but we're not going to go into that right now. I've been in my town doing some work, and I just wanted to kind of give you an update as to what I've been doing. So over here to our left is my latest build. It was a lot of fun. Why is there dirt on top of my thing? There is no telling. Okay, sorry, got distracted. So part of the lore of this town is that it is the home of the Var Sadar. They are the Blood Rangers. They hunt and protect the world from vampires. And so this tower is their keep. This is the Blood Ranger keep. And let's go inside and see what I've done. So first, we kind of got some bookshelves, got some armor over here, barrels for storage. They don't really have much in them other than some stuff that random stuff. So this is a map of the area. This is my village here. And this is where High Waters is based out of, part of it anyway. And then the land in between. Over here is where Mr. Mumbles is at. This is his dwarven realms that he's been working on. So I thought it'd be kind of nice, kind of cool to have a setup so you can kind of see where everybody's at. Plus, I kind of took some inspiration from Skyrim and the towers they had where they had maps and just different things around, laying around. So got a... Hoglin skull or Hoglin head. No, sorry, not Hoglin. That's a piglin. That's a Hoglin. So then, we, like I said, got some armor, some banners. Over here is the barracks for the Blood Rangers. Haven't done too much decorating. Probably need to do some more in here, but that'll be a project for later. Then this way, we go upstairs. And this is like a weapon storage. Got a bunch of random weapons I've collected and armor over the 
since the server's been started. And then over here is the Lord Commander's office. Thought it was kind of cool. Liked it. Uh, got some banners. Got his desk. Got another Hogland skull. You know, you got to have a picture of the Wither. The Undead. So that's where the Lord Commander's office is. And if we keep going up, this is going to be just more storage. We keep going up. We have kind of like a little kitchen type area with storage. We've got a little table brewing. This, this is kind of for me, uh, I figure it's kind of like where the library and the alchemist of the group, this is where he hangs out, makes potions for the Blood Rangers, does research on vampires, that kind of thing. And if we keep going, we go up to the top of the tower. And this is where the meetings happen. This is where the Lord Commander meets with his troops, gives them instructions, maybe preaches a sermon on the evils of vampirism and the blood eaters. And so, yeah, this is the Blood Ranger Keep. I like the way it turned out. Spent a lot of time working on it. And, um, yeah, so this is it. Kind of look down. You can kind of look and see the town. We've got the prison over there, which I'll go to next. And then over here is our brewing shop. My house is over there, the warehouse. Of course, you can see the nether portal right over there. So... I like the way this turned out. It was a lot of work, but I am very happy with what happened with the final result. So let's go down and check out the prison. through the town we come out to the outskirts and I decided to build a prison since I had Moloch Vale and Farron I needed a place to put them that they'd be safe and to kind of for the lore's sake to keep the town safe so we have Moloch Vale over here in the game that we had been playing Moloch Vale was a vampire and one of the characters, one of the players was named Appledore. And you're not supposed to be able to intimidate vampires. You're just supposed to be able to, you know, fight them. This guy was here to fight. Appledore wanted to try to intimidate them. So he rolled and got a natural 20, which is an automatic success. So he was able to actually intimidate a vampire. And get him to do to back off and not fight. So I thought that was worthy of making a character here in Minecraft. So this is Moloch Vale, who had been captured by Appledore. And that's the lore, the story behind this guy. And now he sits in the prison cell, upset that he's been caught. Over here is Farron. I've been using him to convert villagers. And so I've got a lot of the villagers back in their shops and I've got converted them and sent them back so that I can get some good deals. So this is the prison. I still want to do some more decorating in this area, but we're not going to do that today. So this has been Total Geek Package. I just want to thank you for geeking out with me. Have a good night or day. Whatever time you're watching this, enjoy it. Oh, inside of my head. Nope, there we go. Oh, yes. Thanks for geeking out. 
The Lord Commander stood at the top of the Blood Ranger Keep. He gazed out over the desert and wondered what the Varshul were plotting. The Blood Eaters had been quiet in their desert caves lately. They say they wanted peace, but can you trust vampires? He knew his men would be ready. The Var Sadar stood against the darkness. The Blood Rangers stood between mortals and the Blood Eaters. If the Blood Rangers failed, the world would fall to the vampires. The Blood Rangers must always be ready. They must always be watching. Always on guard.